Alright, I'm going to be talking about Zerg versus Terran in this tutorial. You can see here doing the splitting of the SC, or of the drones, sending them all to a different patch right away. Just gets you slightly faster minerals. Send out the Overlord to scout. Now, it's very important when you're playing against a Terran, unlike with Protoss or with Zerg, you have to be a lot more careful with that Overlord because the Terran's initial unit marines can kill it. And if you lose that first Overlord, it is a huge hit. It really hurts. It puts you at a significant disadvantage, so be careful with it. Like, you can use it to peek in maybe at one point, but don't fly too far in the base because then you'll get killed by the first marine. And for that same reason, it's oftentimes still a good idea to go ahead and nine drone scout as well, so that you can really get inside the base and see what it is that the Terran is actually doing. It's kind of preferential, but it's oftentimes a good idea. So, uh, first thing to talk about is kind of the build. The, pretty much the standard build used in ZVT is the 12 hatch, which means that I will get an overlord at nine, at 9 food, and then I will make drones till I have 12 out of 18 supply, and then I will send a drone out to make a hatchery. And you can see right here, uh, I take this gas, but I'm not actually taking the gas, I'm just using it to get an extra drone, because when you make that gas, you lose a drone, so then you can make another one and then cancel the gas, and you can get 10 out of 9, so it just lets you get one drone out a little bit faster. So then, like I said, at 12 supply, I will build the hatchery. And then at 11 supply, I'll build the spawning pool, and then I'll build three more drones, and at 14, I'll build a set, or third hatchery, and I'll build it in my main base. So I'll have two bases and three hatcheries. And usually they'll be, yeah, so I'll have two bases and three hatcheries, and then I'll take my gas. And this may sound dangerous, getting three hatcheries before you've even, before you've even made any zerglings, but the reason it's not dangerous is because the 12th hatch is safe. You can do that, get the spawning pool. And the reason you can get the 3rd hatch and it's safe is because the 3rd hatch, you'll, like when your pool finishes, you'll still have money to make zerglings. So, you know, by that, that 14th hatch or getting that 3rd hatch doesn't delay your zerglings in any way because when the pool finishes, you still have the money to get the zerglings. So you get zerglings at the same time. So it's totally safe. Plus, you don't even usually need that many. Uh, it's fine to make an initial just... Uh, initial pair, so just two Zerglings to go briefly scout Terran and see what's up. But most Terrans aren't going to get super aggressive super fast. Now, the exception to that, the only thing that 12th hatch itself is super vulnerable to is like proxy BBS, BBS standing for barracks, barracks supply, meaning getting two barracks before supply depot. It can be vulnerable to that, especially if it's proxied, and also sometimes to bunker rush. So what you have to do is, if you see a Terran building a bunker in range of that hatchery, you're natural. You got to pull some drones and keep it from keep the uh, keep the SCV from finishing the bunker. Try to kill it. And if you can't do that, you got to pull drones, and you really have to do your best to try to kill Marines before they get in the bunker. So try to surround them and keep the Marines from getting in the bunker, because otherwise, if he's able to get a few Marines in there. Most of the time you're gonna lose your hatchery. You can see here my gas finishes. I'm getting lair So to recap what I've done so far, it's 12 hatch 11 pool because the hatch takes you down. Well, this is super stupid. Don't do this guys. That's Like exactly what I was talking about losing the overlord. I wasn't paying attention because I was talking and I lost the overlord Don't do that That really hurts me in this and kind of throws everything a little bit off But you can see it was 12 hatch 11 pool and it goes down because you made you made a drone into a hatchery and then three more drones to 14, then you make a hatch, and then you get your gas. And then when your pool finishes, you can make anywhere between two and six lings. If you have reason, like if you scouted something and you have reason to think the Terran's going to be super aggressive, it's okay to go ahead and make four or six lings, but the general standard is just to make two lings so you can put them up by Terran's base, maybe peek in, see what they're doing, and they're just kind of, you kind of let them chill outside Terran's base, so when they move out, you can react with making a sunken or two to defend. And so once the lair goes done, is down, I will continue to drone. I'll add a sunken or two as time goes on, so that if they rush, I can be safe from that. If they or not, if they rush, but I won't morph them into sunken colonies because I don't want to spend the extra money because I'm trying to keep and get out as many drones as possible. So I'm just making drones until until the lair is finished and until I make the spire. And one thing I forgot to say is that as soon as you morph the lair, start making your lair with the first hundred gas, you should go ahead and take your gas at your natural. 
So you don't, but you don't need that until you started your lair. And then next thing I'm going to do is get my spire. As soon as lair finishes, you put down the spire, and you can continue to pump drones. Or what most people like to do is once they make their spire, they'll make some lings. I'll make like 12 zerglings so that they have the potential for mutiling flank if Terran moves out, or to look for holes and see if there's like some missile turrets they can pick off under some undefended missile turrets they can pick off ahead of time to make their harass more effective. So, and but wait, what's key with this is you can kind of keep making whatever until the spire is at 300 HP. When the spire is at 300 HP, you stop making everything. That way, you can save your larva, and you can have nine larva as soon as the spire finishes, and hatch nine mutilus right away. That allows you to get, and then you'll make two more, because you want 11 mutilus. The reason it's 11, not 12, is so that you can group the mutilus for an overlord for micro, which I'll talk about a little more a little later when I actually get the mutus out. You can see I've got the two sunkens there. That way, if some if something moves out, I take the sunkens and I more or I take this, the creep colonies and morph them to sunkens. And basically, the general rule is depending on the size of the attack, you need two or you need one sunken for every medic. Now, obviously, there's limits to this. I mean, if they come out with 12 marines and no medics, that doesn't mean you need zero sunken colonies. But as a general rule of thumb. If they're maintaining the typical ratio, one sunken per medic will work out pretty well, especially as your mutilus quickly arrive to finish off any attacking force. And usually what will happen is Terran will move out with their first ten marines and two medics to force you to make those sunken colonies, to force you to spend that money. And they won't necessarily intend to attack you at all, but they'll at least move out, which means you don't have a choice. You do have to get those sunkens to defend, because if they do come all the way, you'll need them to defend. Usually you'll need two. Now, if you scout something funny, what's called like the Ayumi build, which is where Terran gets like four barracks and tries to sunken bust you, you'll need more colonies, probably four to six, depending on what's going on, and you'll have to defend that. But if you defend that, you'll be pretty far ahead. So as you can see here, I've got my mutas out. So I'm going to send them out, and you can see I'm putting down the Hydra Den and taking my third base. So pretty much the way that works is you get your mutas out, and what you're going to do with the mutas is you're going to harass Terran. And the point of this harass is you need to pick off marines because you want to lower their marine count. Uh, if you can find open targets for SCVs, it's good to kill those as well. And the main thing you're doing is keeping Terran in his base. And the reason you're doing this is so you have time for your lurker research to finish and make lurkers and have time to get your uh, third base set up and well defended. So you don't want to lose the mutas too fast. Usually, especially with 3-hatch muta, you don't want to be overly aggressive. You want to use them, you want to kill marines, you want to pick stuff off, but don't be too aggressive. Like, don't sack them all for nothing or whatever, because you need you want to have the time to get lurkers out. Because if they kill your mutas before you get lurkers,